Hi, my good friends in real estate investment trust. In the week, and two more weeks left is the Singapore REIT Symposium. Now, this week, I'm or rather this year, I'm actually privileged to be invited. To come down to give us so that you can have a good understanding a good free preview of how we go in depth and grill into real estate investment trusts substantive stuff that we do in our GCP global investment classes for the last 34 years and for if you come down to for the rate symposium you get a free synopsis of what we do and help you to decipher your key burning questions so <clears throat> I think you need to properly get some tickets and then come down in uh, two weeks time my segment is actually at five and tell interesting on real estate investment trust well so if you ask yourself, ladies and gentlemen, what is there to show and tell? Now, our approach in GCP Global Investment Classes, all these 34 years, is this. The key to any real estate investment trust interest lies in the shareholders of real estate investment trusts. Simply put, real estate investment trusts don't do well at all. There's no support from shareholders at all. There's no real estate investment trust market in Singapore at all. Okay, now this has been the case for the last 21 years, but will it continue in the next 21 years? Well, interesting questions, you know, so as it is, ladies and gentlemen, in the 5 p.m. panel discussion, I'm actually, and you are probably allowed to ask questions, and I, I, I would like to actually guesstimate that if, if you were to ask questions on that day, you probably would be looking at the more short-term understanding on what reads to have in your portfolio and what reads to sell that you it's actually in your portfolio because all along if you've been following us we tell you that the key in not having headache while you have real estate investment trust in your portfolio is to avoid all the bad apples and indeed if you had followed us in our classes as well as our youtube video for the last one year you'll notice that you have avoided these headaches but I think, ladies and gentlemen, what is more pertinent and close to my heart is question three, as given there. Are REITs no longer attractive investment? This is something I think has been a recurring theme because in the last one year or so, in our last two years in our GCP Global Investment Classes already, we have told many of our high net worth individual investors and, and the family offices that in many circumstances, REITs are no longer viable, good, alternative, attractive investments. Why is that the case? And this is something that we want to actually delve into deeper in this week's video. But bear in mind, you know, what we are saying is coming from the uh, perspective that the key thing, ladies and gentlemen, in making money in the real estate investment trust is having the right rates in the portfolio. But more importantly, the, conner the connery that runs along it is the fact that you should not have the good, you should not have the bad rates in the portfolio because that will actually drain your psychological your mental makeup, you know, your well-being, you know, such that you're not able to focus on the reads that are able to make you in your millions. And this is what in this video we are going to discuss in detail. So do give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our, our weekly videos, and well, do sign up for our, <coughs> our GCP Global Investment Classes end of uh, this month. Twenty seventh of May, if you find our classes, our analysis in depth, such that you are able to make good money in real estate investment trust and sidestepping the bad apples. Now, once again, in two weeks ago, uh, we mentioned to you that 
reads are on the threshold of a breakup, right? Now, whether they will break up, you know, on the long term side, you know. Long-term resistance, you know, which was actually traced since the the uh, peak of last year, you know, went in the Fed start to interest, increase interest rates from 17th of March, as you can see, from the upper orange line, and supported on the downside, you know, where you saw the lows trace on 21st of October, 2022, for which we were quoted in Business Times as calling the market lows, you know, on Thursday. You know, um, 20th of October 2022. Two. That's how accurate we have been. You know, so we are actually on the threshold of a breakout, but essentially, will it be break out on the upside or downside? This is something very interesting. So, another question that you may want to post during the G during the REIT symposium that's starting in two weeks' time. Now, this uh, year's Ritz Symposium actually also profiled many other uh, speakers. You can see that many of them are Ritz CEOs who are very good friends with us. As you can see, if you read through GCP Global Investment uh, Facebook pages, you notice that we actually have and meet regularly um, with the CEOs to get an further, deeper understanding of real estate investment trusts, the operational aspects as well as basically the many, many other structural and uh, capital aspects of running real estate investment trusts before we present them to you. So as you can see, for sure, that's how we have been so thorough in the last 34 years, not only just in analyzing REITs, but in all forms of investments that we delve into. So do join us, you know, but so let's come back to this week's topic, you know, that is you know, so other than the fact that if you are not going to ask me, essentially, you know, well, pretty obvious which reads to buy and which reads to sell, which we normally get in most public talks that are uh, complimentary, you know, um, I just want to tell you that essentially that the, the key thing, you know, that is actually the third question that we have, you know, which is close to our heart is, are REITs no longer viable, good, attractive, long-term investments? Well, look no further, ladies and gentlemen. Look at this table that we have actually tabulated for you. These are IPOs of REITs in the last seven years. Yes, take a look, count all of them. From Mental Life REIT down to Fraser Logistics Trust, down to EC World REIT, down to Capital Old Pacific REIT, Cromwell REIT listing in 2017, Cecilia REIT listing in 2017. One eight A R A U S hospitality re prime read land lease commercial read elite commercial read United Hampshire and the last two Daiwa House and Digital Core which were both listed to ago. You can see, ladies and gentlemen, the second column dictates which is the IPO date. The third column shows you the respective IPO prices. You can see that, not surprising, most of them are coming in at a IPO price of $0.80, cents, 88 55, you know. but you can see that the prices henceforth that they have done are actually none other than fat fat. In fact, they are like fatted, fatted. Kind of situation meaning so bad, so bad, and look at their respective. Respective prices as compared as of last Friday, six of May, the respective closing. You know, so and you can calculate the changes, and then you will be thinking, oh my goodness me, ladies and gentlemen. If you are approaching 60 years old like I, met, like I am, you may be losing some hair, you know, but you shouldn't be losing hair over losing money in real estate investment trusts. You may be turning white hair, you know, but you shouldn't be losing white hair, you know, because of real estate investment trusts. Because real estate investment trusts is very clear. If they're no good, dump them. If they're good, buy them and love them, okay? But so if you look at the 
performances, you'll be shell shocked, ladies and gentlemen. You know, um, you know. So before you uh, well, do sit down. You know, get good rested so that you will not be your heart will not be palpitated by these changes. You can see, ladies and gentlemen, if you ask the simple questions, how many reads listed in the last seven years? The answer is, as well, I've tabulated for you, 1313. Now, how many REITs actually made money for you in the last seven years compared to their respective IPO prices? You'd be surprised. Shit! Almost all of them lost money for you with the exception of one. That is 12 out of 13 lost money for you. You know? So you may say, Legion, hey, I bought into REITs to actually get the quarterly or half year dividend. But ladies and gentlemen, Go calculate each of the respective fee, even if they pay you or had pay you 6% dividend per year. For each of the respective years since they got listed, you know, the capital losses that they have suffered and inflicted on real estate investment trust shareholders in Singapore is so heavy that the dividends is so kacang 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 pute that it pales in comparison, ladies and gentlemen. You know, so remember, keep your face, you know, well moisturized, healthy. Never be peeled, you know, by the reeds, especially the poor reeds, okay, in that have shown that, that kind of under and huge underperformance. Take, for example, some of those losses that you could have suffered, you know, and I certainly hope that you have not, especially if you have been following our, our real estate investment classes for the last uh, three decades as well as actually our YouTube videos on a weekly basis. You can see that Menno Life, you would have lost 79%. Easy World Read, you have lost 64%. And Easy World Read was only less than 2016, so you have lost 64% in seven years. Holy shit. Okay, then what about Capital Old Pacific to listed in 2017? It's down 60%. And then you actually have prime rate. Man, this is prime for a butcher. Okay, as in basically it got listed in 2019 and now it's not even four years and it's already butchered 71%. So, ladies and gentlemen, what do you think, therefore, you know, that my most burning and most fearful question I have for you, you know, as we approach the REIT Symposium, is that are REITs no longer long-term good investments? Especially when you look at this particular table, for all the REITs, for the, all the 13 REITs that have listed in the last seven years, well, ladies and gentlemen, look at your hair color, look at your hair density, look at the paleness of the face, and tell me, ladies and gentlemen, share in the link below, are REITs no longer long-term, good long-term investments? Okay, so, you know, I actually found that I was on the front cover of this Pauses magazine way back, you know, in January 2008. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, in January 2008, you know, I told my wife that I wasn't even know, I don't even know that all these years, that means almost 20 years, that was on the front cover of Pulses, which is a publication, as you can see from the indication by the stock exchange, you know, a magazine by the stock exchange, Houses magazine. And remember, in the front cover, I was actually saying that, Gabriel, yeah, how to make millions from the market, okay? So I just want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, you know, as I help the boxing club, you know, you know, one of the key things we always like to, and have exhibited over the last decades, you know, is to be able to give you the home punch, Okay, so do join us for our REITs and Symposium classes. REITs Symposium on the...
20th of May, or our GCP Global Investment Trust on the 27th of May. Well, you do sign up if you can still and you can still enjoy the early bird special because we are going to give you the home punches, not only a REITs, but more importantly, on those REITs that will be able to punch you and give you the birth the punch, you know, that is able to deliver more than expected returns. So once again, it's a sobering issue. Are REITs no longer good long-term investment? Something that we will have asked in this quick video. Let us know your comments and, uh, and, and, uh, and views. Thank you so much for enjoying our every weekly video and supporting our last week's video in particular. Once again, take care and have a good week ahead.